Hi, I'm Gary Jacobs, and welcome to Long Island Backstory, where we film at the Cablevision Studios here in Hop Hog, New York. Our next guest is attorney David Cap. He has an eclectic background. He was involved in the launching of MTV. He's been a video tape operator. Yes, tape, that's not a mistake. <laughs> Technical director, crew chief, and supervisor of On Air Operations for not only MTV, but also the whole Viacom network, including Showtime, the movie channel, Nickelodeon, and VH1. At the same time he was doing this, he managed to go to night school and get his law degree at Toro College. And this is why we have Mr. Cap on the show today, because Mr. Cap is a traffic attorney. And this is something that's concerning us here on Long Island because it's just gotten out of control with the, with the red light tickets, the price of the tickets. Um, I personally got a ticket so, uh, at the Fire Island Lighthouse a, co uh, a couple months ago. And the ticket, I've got it. Oh, damn, I'm just going to pay it because I don't want to take off. The ticket was $175 because it was federal property. The red light tickets are $80. If you don't pay it, and I think it's two to three weeks, then it goes up another $25. So not only are they going crazy issuing these tickets, but it's really become a major funding source for, uh, for our government here on Long Island. And it's, it's out of control how much this is. So welcome to the program, David. Thank and you. Uh, I appreciate you being here. First, let me ask you. Thank you for having me. Go, go, what, what made you become a traffic attorney? Well, you know, I didn't know you were going to mention all my f former jobs. Well, listen, I couldn't help it. You're an eclectic guy. So I, uh, I just wanted to end that with, and then he got a real job. <laughs> um, I used to work in the television business, and I know all you poor guys in the studio can sympathize. Uh, working for a giant conglomerate sometimes can be less than rewarding. I uh, worked for many years in the television business and um, I never felt that I got a proper education and uh, after about 15 years in the, well I, I, I went about 11 years at MTV and decided I really wanted to get a job that would give me a proper education so I decided to get a, a proper education around 1987. I went to night school here at Toro and uh, it helped me do a lot of other things that I never could. My, my career kind of went as far as it could, and uh, getting a law degree opened a lot of doors to other things I did. I built a television station down in Florida. I also was vice president uh, for broadcasting operations at one of the QVC channels, which was the crashing end of my television career, because <laughs> even you guys uh, here in the studio, home shopping, <laughs> very bad. Um, but I really wanted to do things for people, and I'm the happiest lawyer you'll ever meet. I really love my job because I never sue anybody, and I just defend people and try to help them. And, and if there's one message I want to give your viewing audience, both of you, is that there are lawyers like me who actually exist. Most people don't even know that lawyers like me exist, people who specialize in the vehicle and traffic law. People think that when you get a ticket, your only option is to plead guilty or to go to trial. And that's not your only two options. Number one, never plead guilty. Never, ever, ever, which, which camera you got? Never plead <laughs> guilty ever to any ticket, okay? And that's the most important message I, I have to give to people tonight is because it can have a terrible effect on your future. Why, why not plead guilty? Well, if, let's say you say, look, I did it. Good question. They, they screwed me. The guy got me on a radar gun. <laughs> I'm done. Cops are going to go in there. And even if I didn't do it, the cops are going to lie. They're going to listen to him. So why take off a day from work, play the fine, and be done? Very good question. And the There's answer is... a lot of questions in there, I think. Be, because <laughs> often... Well, first of all, you're entitled to a defense. You're entitled to test the government's case against you, no matter what you've done, be it a simple traffic ticket or something really bad. You have the right to say, hey, government, what evidence you got against me? Let me see your case. So and, there's discovery? And not necessarily, okay. but, well, there are some courts where there's no discovery allowed. Well, I, I'm gonna, I want to get to that in a moment. But the important thing is you're allowed to say, hey, government, show me your evidence. Show me the case against me. Or at least bring the cop in and let him say what happened so that I can hear it. Because right. we always don't know what happened. And the other reason is because often we can negotiate a settlement and get the charges reduced. And this brings me to a, something a little technical, but I want to get it out there because people on Long Island are very confused because we have lots of different courts and they're all different. But if you want to break it down into two differences, there's the city and there's Long Island. The city has one kind of court, Long Island has another kind of courts. In the city, it's called TVB, Traffic Violations Bureau. It is a court, it's, a not, it's not even really a court, it's an administrative adjudication that's part of an administrative agency that we all know and love, 
called the Department of Motor Vehicles. In the city, the court is owned and operated by the Department of Motor Vehicles. And that can be problematic because they want to convict you. They make money if they convict right, you. So if you get off, of they don't make any money. They, <laughs> they have a vested interest. And, and, and they have this expedited court system because there are so many cases. And they're also giving up certain rights. The courts in the city, everything goes to trial. And that's the main difference. Everything goes to trial in the city of New York. Is that good? It depends. <laughs> that's the lawyer's answer to everything. It depends. Um, in certain cases, it, it is good. In some cases, it's not good at all. It can be very rough. It's, it's almost always all or nothing, win or lose at trial. Those courts give up the right to jail you. They get this expedited court service. They get these expedited trials because they don't have the same rights a regular court does. They cannot put you in jail in the Traffic Violations Bureau in New York City. And it's important to understand that system because that's what we used to have here in Suffolk County. Used to be up until about two and a half years ago, we had the exact same system here. I worked in that system for more than 20 years and often we would go to court and do a trial at 8.30 and another trial at 10.30 and then two at one o'clock and then another one at 2.30 and another one at 4.30 and it would be trial, 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 trial. It has good and bad points. The good points, cop didn't show up twice, we win. In almost all cases, when the cop doesn't show up in court twice, clients win dismissed. No fines, nothing on the record. And in my practice, we won 57% of our cases because either the cop didn't show up or if he did show up, we had a trial and I did a competent job, more competent than the cop, let's say. Um, if the cop did show up and he had his notes and he's not visibly drunk, we would generally <laughs> lose. And that's what happens in the city. Uh, the other good thing about the city is it can often take years for your case to come to trial. And while the case is pending, nothing hits your driving record. So that's TVB, that's New York City. If you get a ticket in Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Staten Island, that's what happens. You want in that system. It can be very good in some courts and very bad in others. Here on Long Island, in almost every court, there's a district attorney or a local prosecutor and your attorney can speak to them about reducing the charge. And generally, they don't want to go through the whole trial process. They don't want to spend an hour with me don't asking they just want the, the money? Yeah, they want the money. And they'd rather say, Dave, instead of this six-point speeding ticket, how about we knock it down to... And Plus pay money, I'm course, assuming. There's I mean, always I mean, a fine involved. But if, but if the offer is, let's say you got a high speeder, say he's got a six-point speeder, for example, there are some courts that will reduce that down to a parking ticket, which is well worth... Anything you pay, really. Well, yeah. not anything, but it's well worth the fee I charge, which is, rather, which is very reasonable. Also, you don't need a lawyer. You can go to court. Camera two. You people can go to court by yourself and get this done without an attorney. We do a better job of it sometimes. And also, the tendency is to think, oh my God, this fat guy is going to come in and go to trial with me and waste two hours of my time. Right. And also, we know how to do it. We conduct it. We're good at doing this. And they don't want that. And um, so in many cases, they want to make a deal with you because it's easier and simpler. And everybody gets something out of it. Client gets a better deal. They don't have to spend an hour listening to me ask a bunch of dumb questions to an <laughs> officer who could be on the road keeping the, the world safe for you and me. The problem on Long Island is there's a whole spectrum of courts. Some are great and, and they're very motorist friendly and some of them are awful and horrible and you don't ever want to go to court. Is this depending on the judge or the, the, is it depending, or is there a judge or is it a hearing, what, what is it? Um, it's usually, well, it's usually a prosecutor. In Nassau and Suffolk, there are county prosecutors. Um, in the little village justice courts, it'll be a prosecutor who works for that village. Oftentimes, it's uh, someone who's just a part-time employee who's a lawyer during the daytime and then a prosecutor in this village at night. Um, it varies quite a bit. In many municipalities, the policies in that particular village are set by the village board. And they say, okay, well, we'll uh, we have these general guidelines we're going to enforce. Some courts have very specific guidelines that are very onerous, and it varies. Is it criminal? Um, Meaning, do you entitle to all these rights that you have when you're charged criminal to, to uh, confront your accuser, a speedy trial, and uh, discovery? And well, yes and no. For things. example, in New York City, you don't get any discovery. You're not entitled to any kind of discovery ahead of But you're not trial. facing jail. 
but you're not facing jail. When the officer comes in, he's got his notes, you're allowed to see his notes, anything else he presents, you can question him, cross-examine him, uh, but there's no discovery. In many courts here on Long Island, you can do discovery, request what's called a supporting deposition, which is a more formal statement of what happened. And if you supply it in a timely manner, and the police don't respond in a timely manner, you can move to get those tickets dismissed. Right now, I have like, one of my uh, good clients got about six tickets in a particular village in Nassau, and I uh, made my motions, and it's been about a year. I'm still waiting for them to respond. If I go to court and move to dismiss it, those should be dismissed. Problem is, there are some courts that just don't play by those rules. If you request a supporting deposition at Suffolk County's traffic agency, they don't respond. They just they, don't respond? No, they just schedule you for trial. Wow, that doesn't sound fair. Let no, me ask, if you, get a, if you get a ticket with a radar gun, is it, is it done? The guy got the gun, that's it, I'm going to lose the trial. Well, uh, there's all sorts of evidence. There's radar, laser, pacing and visual. The thing to remember is the officer doesn't even need the gun. The officer, under our laws in the state of New York, and this is uh, confirmed by our top court, the uh, New York State Court of Appeals, is that the officer is trained to estimate the speed of moving vehicles. Wow, that's scary. And all he has to do is look at the vehicle and say, I'm trained, I was trained at this date and time at the academy to tr estimate the speed of moving vehicles, and I estimated this vehicle to be going 83 miles an hour, and I'm accurate to within plus or minus five miles per hour. And that's quite often what their testimony is. they win that in court? Not only do they win it, but that's all that's required. That's scary. New York state law does not require more than the officer's visual estimate. They will put the laser and the radar in to confirm the visual. But even the visual alone is sufficient. People come to you all the time and say, he didn't give me a receipt. There's no radar. There's no, I don't have he doesn't have to. All he needs to say is, I'm an officer, I was trained, I'm this accurate, I saw you, and you're going so fast. It can get a little dicey when they're in the car and the car is also moving because they're not trained that way, but they often testify that way because uh -huh. they're, they're trained in a stationary position. And they'll often say, well, I was driving in the car and I saw you and you were going that fast. Were you ever trained that way? No. Judges, some care, some don't. Uh, another thing is they're often uh, doing these at night, and they're generally not trained at night. Either way, that's good. that's that's leaving a lot of uh, the guy. Because you know what happens if the guy oh, wants to make his numbers, and they, we're always told there's no quotas, there's no quotas, there's no quotas. So what does the guy care? What does the cop care? What's he gonna lie for? Is there quotas? Well, of course there's quotas. Uh, officers will, to their dying breath, they will deny that there are quotas. But there are things to remember. One is a practical matter. You're a police captain. You got a bunch of guys under you. You got to promote somebody. Who are you going to promote? The guy who's bringing in the least tickets or the guy who's bringing in the most tickets? Right. Now, is that a valid way to run a police force? I don't know. I'm not an expert in that sort of thing. But, but that's what the police will say. We have to look at our officers and see how much they're producing, just like any job. Um, but to their dying breath, they will deny that there are quotas, unless, of course, they're having a labor dispute with management, in which case they'll take out a full-page ad in Newsday, like they did in May of 2012. And this is the ad I believe is going to come up on the camera. And the police uh, admitted it in Newsday in May of 2012. They were having a dispute with their management, and they have this whole diatribe here about how it's so awful that we are being pressured to write summonses, <laughs> pressure to convict. And what they actually allege in here is that if an officer went to court in New York City and lost, they would have Internal Affairs watch that trial and they would dock him three days, three days vacation pay worth more than $900. And if you read this, you'll, you'll see it's all in there. And um, there, of course there are quotas. And even more importantly, the red light cameras have quotas. And this is a very important issue that everybody in Nassau and Suffolk really needs to get organized on. Because it's a bad policy. Municipalities all over the country are trying to raise money. They need money. And they've decided that they're going to raise that money on the backs of the motorists. Why? Because everybody hates the motorists. Oh, that guy's a speeder. He's crazy. He's a lunatic. I've been doing this a long time. I do a couple hundred of these cases every year. Believe me, they're all just normal people like you and me. They just know that you don't go get anywhere at 55. And I'd like to go to some ancient history and explain to your viewers here why the cop's job is like shooting fish in a barrel. It goes back to the Arab oil embargo of the 1970s 
when it was scared that there wouldn't be enough oil, so the speed limits across the nation were lowered to 55. I'm an old, old man. I remember when I was younger, the speed limits were 65, 75, and even higher in some places. And now that the Arab oil embargo is gone, and this is ancient history, the speed limits need to be brought back up to where they need to be. Long Island drivers don't drive 55. Nobody drives 55. They drive 65 and above. Cops drive 65 mm -hmm. and above. Judges drive 65 and above. And the fact of the matter is, these artificially low speed limits make the cops' job so easy that all they have to do is say, gotcha. I think if you're driving 55, it's dangerous. It, people, people are beeping the horn at yeah. you, coming up on you too fast. It's not the moving speed. They make your life you a can. living hell. If you go 55, your life is a living hell. Right. Or if you go 30 even on some of these roads, if you go 30 miles an hour, it's, that's like walking. And it's even more important because, really, when you get into the <coughs> local villages, you should, you should be going 30. Right. If, you, if you're driving out on the east end, you're coming through a little windy little village somewhere, you should be going 30. Right. That's the speed limit in little small village towns and roads, and it's dangerous. Um, what's unfair is certain east end towns, I won't <coughs> I'll mention any names, <laughs> but you drive into that town, and the speed limit will change. In, in the course of just a few miles, the speed limit changes seven or eight times. Right, and it you. goes from 30 to 20 to 15 to 20 to 30 to 20 to 15, and they just nail you, and there's no consistency. Um, and, and what bugs me and worries me seriously, uh, no jokes aside, is that the policies that bring this about, the, the lust for getting money from traffic tickets and, and traffic violations, is exactly what happened in Ferguson. This is exactly what happened in Baltimore. And that's why there's been terrible unrest and rioting in these cities. A lot of it is alleged to be racially motivated. Cops, even here in Suffolk County, the feds have been uh, busting cops who have been targeting Latinos. And racism still exists, and it does happen. And policies that seek to punish motorists disproportionately just bring about this kind of civil unrest that we shouldn't be moving towards. We're, we seem to be moving in that direction, and we really shouldn't be. Let me, let me just go back to the red light ticket uh, uh, cameras, because that's, that's a big issue. Number one, somebody gets a ticket. Should they hire you to fight these red light tickets? I mean, somebody's getting no. multiple tickets. They shouldn't <laughs> hire you. Well. I wish they would, but it doesn't make any economic sense because the ticket is no points. It doesn't show up on your driving record. It's only 80 bucks. Now, I well, only eighty dollars a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but compared to the cost of hiring an attorney, it's only 80 bucks. Mo this is it hard. What if somebody says I'm going to do it on principle? I hate these damn tickets. Well, don't get me wrong. I don't want to give the wrong impression here. I think every single person who receives a red light camera ticket should fight their ticket. Why? Because it's nothing but a cash grab and a cash cow. Uh, these, tick, the, these devices don't prevent accidents. Well, they, they prevent one kind of accidents and they promote other kinds of accidents. They prevent the T-bones, but there's more rear ends. Mm -hmm. And if everybody started obeying the law tomorrow, uh, the, then the camera should be removed. But that's not what the contracts provide for. What the contract provide for is you have to get this many tickets or you owe us money. It, the contract in Suffolk County say if you don't give out, how many does it say? The minimum should be 25 video validated violations in a 16 hour period, then you, we have to pay a penalty. You think it's 2000 um, $2,132 <laughs> plus 1725 for each paid citation. If it was truly aimed at safety, there wouldn't be minimums. And in a perfect world, these would wind down to zero. Everybody would uh, obey the law, and then the cameras would be removed, but that's not the plan. The plan is, okay, revenues are down, people are obeying, and they're stopping. The cameras are not giving out that many citations. The government's answer is, let's put up more cameras right. to make up the, the shortfall. That's not the way it's supposed to work. Um, it, it's a terrible system, and it's nothing but a cash so, grab. But if you want to kill this, these red light cameras, people, here's how to do it, camera two. Just everybody, everybody watching, demand a trial. And do what? When they get to trial, you're standing like an idiot. What do they do? Tell, tell everybody what to do who's you watching. Don't, well, go to trial and you go in. Did you do it guilty? Here, no, I didn't, Your Honor. What do you do? Here's what what do you say? Give it, them something to say. It, I want to consult. Everyone says I want to confront my accuser. And they say, no, this isn't criminal. You don't get the right to do it. What do they say? There are two defenses in every traffic case. It wasn't me, and I didn't do it. But they got a camera. They got a, they got a guy who's going to show a picture of you. The camera rarely shows your face. But isn't the ticket on the car owner, not the driver? I understand that, but if it was your son, for example, then your son deserves the ticket, not you, and you have a valid defense saying, I did not run that red light. 
Right. And they're make, to me, they're making you enforce the law. You say, look, if it wasn't me, well, who did it? Well, it's not up to me to enforce the law. It's up to you. Well, that, that's very, I recently had a case where, see, the thing to remember is good weather and bad weather, these cameras just keep shooting. Shoot, shoot, shoot. So I, I, I'll tell you the God's honest truth. I've done exactly one of these cases because your average client won't pay my fee to fight an $80 ticket, and I don't blame them. Uh, a very dear friend of mine who I've known since kindergarten said, look, this wasn't me. I was 300 miles away. And indeed, the, the, the camera shot, it tried to read the license plate in the rain, couldn't read it, and it just makes a guess. Right. And that guess went to my friend's house. And it wasn't his car. So I went to court. Look, not my guy's car. Here's his registration. Here's his sticker. Here's a photo of his car. It's a different car, different sticker, different so on. And they said, okay, have a seat. And after an hour, I began to wonder why I was still sitting there. They should have dismissed it. And the fact of the matter is this particular court I went to is under orders not to dismiss anything until they can find the actual culprit. And they kept me there for about an hour and a half till they found the right car. And they kept coming out and saying, we can't find it. So it's I, not your what, problem. I, <laughs> exactly. It's not my problem. <laughs> Nevertheless, the court made me wait, wait, wait until I said, you know, maybe that X is a K. Oh. And they go back. Oh, we found it. Great. Now you can leave, Mr. Cap. They've been ordered by Albany, don't release anything, don't release one dollar until you can find the actual culprit and get that money. Um, viewers, I'll, I'll say it again, go to trial. And do what? Sorry, they Gary go to makes trial it, You make a good what? point. They, they should have some sort of defense paired. But the thing to remember is that's not necessary. It's not the burden on you to prove it wasn't you. The burden is on the court to prove it was you. Okay? You yeah. or your car? You, you have to be, there's a very so famous So if you can prove that you're out of town, you Didn't you hear that there's a very famous case out west, a guy who's driving around, got 20 of these, 26 of these tickets wearing a monkey mask? They can't yeah. prove it's him. So let me ask you, so somebody goes in and they bring evidence and they say, whatever, they listen, here, I was at dinner this day, here's my receipt. Listen, I didn't say you were going to win. No, but some people what want I, to take their pound of flesh and fight back. Well, yeah. So you, the you first thing like you say, it wasn't me, it must have been... My wife, my son, my daughter, one of their idiot friends, blah, blah, blah. Anybody except you, you weren't there. Right. And they'll say, oh, just issue to your car, you should just plead guilty. But there's no reason, there's no advantage to pleading guilty. The fine's the same. Right. Um, the, the thing is this. If everyone who got these tickets went to trial and did nothing and said nothing, just made the court go through the motions of trying all these well, people. They're lecture about what a money grab it is. Or right. even if they say nothing, okay. even if they go to the court and remain completely silent, there will be a line of people out the courthouse door every day of the year. And it will become so onerous to operate this system that it's going to cost more to go to court and on trial on all these cases than to collect the money. And, and unfortunately, sometimes when the government is doing something that is illegal or immoral, which is... I guess this falls into immoral. Both, I, think. I, uh, I don't. I don't. I mean, they've got all the legislation enacting it. Well, that doesn't make it right. I mean, well, listen, that's we why know I the government lies. It we know the TV lies. We listen. You were in the, the film business. We know you can change it. Listen, that's why I said it may not be illegal, but it's certainly immoral. So if everybody who got these tickets simply said, "I'm going to court on this. Give me a trial date." You have no idea how much work that would cause for the court system. It would cost them more to operate it than they'd be getting in. The, the way to beat these folks is to demand a trial on every single case. Sadly, most people have lives and jobs and kids and oh, dogs God, have a job. And, 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 <laughs> and pets to take care of. So they don't have the time to do this. However, I encourage every one of your viewers to do it anyway. Even if it's just to say, I wanted my day in court, thank you, Your Honor, and go out and pay. Yeah. The amount of time it would take them to process all these cases would be cut a lot into their bottom line and make them think twice about it. Yeah, David, a few questions go on, on the cameras. First of all, I've seen some of the cars now, they're putting something on their license plate that looks like it distorts the, uh, the view of the plate. You could see it head on, but if you move at different angles, it looks like it would be hard to read. Number one, does it work? Number two, is it legal? Uh, yes, no. Yes, it works too, it's not legal. Yes, it works. Is it cheaper to get it's the ticket for that than it is to get it for the camera? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, it's a little, 
under VTL Section 402, you're not allowed to put anything on your license plate. In fact, when you get even your, it, okay, when you get the car at the dealership, that little that little frame that says it came from Bob Spreen's, mm -hmm. even that's not legal. You can't even have those on, but the, the cops ignore it. You can't have anything on the license plate to obscure it, and uh, it's probably a $150 fine rather than 80. So if you're getting two of these a month, maybe ahead of the game. Well, you, the only sin is getting caught, right? right. Um, you, I don't recommend anybody do that. I rec Look, the law says you must cease all forward momentum. And if everybody just ceased all forward momentum, you wouldn't get these tickets. Another important misconception is a lot of defendants are told, well, you didn't stop for three seconds. Right, I've heard that. I was going to ask that too. What's the law? There's no requirement you stop for any period of time. You must come to a complete stop, even if it's for an instant, you have complied with the law. So is that a defense? Why? Because I, yeah. I got a ticket making right on red. I stop. I just stopped past the line. Well, but I didn't stop for three seconds. If you come to a complete, here's the way a lot of trials go. Just so you, your, your people can know. How does a red light trial go? A lot of them go like this. Okay, let's watch the video, says the judge. And the judge says, when you come to a complete stop, clap. And here's what the trial looks like. Hey, hey, <laughs> uh, uh. Guilty. Go see the cashier. But what if you did stop for a second and then went? Perfectly legal. And can you put these cameras, they don't seem like they're, it's, it's good enough of a shot to determine whether you stopped for that second or not. I think they are. I, I've seen a lot of the footage from these things. And if you really came to a complete stop, you can see it. A lot of the officers will tell you, they, came, they did the California roll. That's right. what the cops call it when you just... You roll, roll, and you're looking, and you're looking, and you just keep going through. Listen, that's what everybody does. It's very sad. I once set up a camera outside of my house and put it on the corner where I have a stop sign, and I, I watched about 100 cars go through. Can you guess what percentage came to a full stop? I would say very small, if any. Yeah, I want to pick a number. Uh, 2%. Lower. Really? 1%? Lower. Nobody? Nobody. <laughs> okay, so that's the... But the, now people are careful because we know this, so we do come to more of a stop because there's no three-second rule. It's no three, there's no such thing as a three-second rule. It's a, Don't just, believe it. Okay, so if you really do come to a stop and you get this ticket, then you really sh absolutely Absolutely should. fight it. However, don't mistake my message. Fight them anyway. anyway. What about the white line, David? Well, that's where you're supposed to stop. You have to stop because a lot of the lines are farther them. back, and then you have to stop at the line, but then you would still have to stop again. So if you go over the line but stop where you could see, you get the ticket. Right. That you sucks. have to stop before the line. What about spray paint? That you, there's the sprays that you put on your license plate that is supposed there's to make it shiny make and flash. reflected. Listen, technically it's illegal. It's very hard to spot, so it may in fact be effective, but it's not legal. You can't put anything on the license plate. Technically okay. that's not legal. I'm just trying to find a way around that. What about, the, uh, about red cars? I was always told, don't get a red car because you get more tickets in a red car. It stands out for the cops. Is there any truth to that? Well, I think the best advice for not getting it is never ever be a beautiful young lady. If you're a beautiful young lady and you're driving you're a car, you might get a ticket. Really? Also, I think you get pulled over more. Well, that's what because I, they that's want to pull I'm you over, but then I'm you saying. don't get the ticket. No, you, well, sometimes you do. <laughs> um, in my experience, I found that the young men and women who have these show cars, these souped up cars, do get more tickets than the average person. Also, a lot of my clients, uh, they have these show cars, and there's no front plate. I don't want to put a front plate on, it looks bad. You got to put a front plate on your car. Also, a terrible problem is tint. People are buying cars, and the tint is too dark. It's fine in Florida, not in New York. A lot of judges have a real problem with that. Make sure that you know you have to have at least seventy percent transparency, and a lot of dealerships are selling illegal cars. Wow, what about uh, right now with all this the uh, with marijuana and they're talking about making it legal and you could do some things, but marijuana stays in your system for thirty days. So, what's the, how soon can you smoke marijuana before you could drive? Because if you smoke it tonight at a party and then the next day you drive, you get pulled over and the cop says, "Ah, this guy's driving to do a blood test on." Him. Are you? Are you responsible? Because you didn't do it for the day before. I think we need a whole show to cover that. Because now you're into DWI laws and uh, things like that. And I, I think we're out of time. You guys flashing the one minute over here. Well, listen, this is a <coughs> Well, marijuana, a people, currently uh, there's no test for it. It's not illegal to drive under the influence of marijuana. It's, it's illegal to drive under the influence of anything that could uh, impair your, your judgment. Uh, look, I'm not in favor of anything that could m impair you in a car. But all the best evidence shows that people who smoke marijuana drive better. Just say, say your website because if somebody, you also have information right. on there. You know, a lot of it's tongue-in-cheek. But listen, you say don't plead guilty. So 
go ahead, uh, give your website. Visit it, traffic-lawyer.com. We have lots of information, frequently asked questions, speed traps. I'd be uh, happy to call. If you call, we'd be happy to talk to you and answer your questions. Yeah, and I have friends who have used you, and I know you're, you're, not only did you give advice on whether or not to hire you, that was, you know, uh, that was very fair. Your fees are also a lot more reasonable than a divorce lawyer, which I can say <laughs> personal experience. I hope, God, I hope so. <laughs> Thanks, David. My pleasure. I'm Gary Jacobs, and thank you for joining us at Long Island Backstory.